Do you remember why you got into this work? For me, it was about social justice. I was idealistic. I was ready to change the world. I wanted to change lives, so I became a teacher. The reality of the job, though, was a little bit different. S slapped in the face with, with prescriptive curriculum, with high-stakes testing, with a whole lot of things that were just slowly whittling away everything that I got into this, and I believed in this. I was not getting the opportunity to teach kids, get them ready for a world that I thought they needed to be ready for. Then in 2012, I had the opportunity to reinvent a school. It's a 50-year-old building, 50-year-old school. It's on the east side of San Jose in the Evergreen School District. And we've got some people here, maybe. So uh, I think, what are we gonna, how are we going to do this? Well, PBL became the answer for us. PBL became the learning model that we were going to use. We just had one problem. We didn't know how to do it. So we did what you're supposed to do. We came to PBL world. <laughs> right? We sat right here in, in, well, it wasn't right here, but we sat in the audience of the very first PBL world. We sat there. We had great sessions. We had great late night conversations. We were pumped up, ready to go. We had lots of wine. Lots of wine, right? But we went back and we did it. We were pumped up. We were ready to go. We got back. We, everybody launched projects. We got kids up presenting. We got them working in groups. We, were, we had panels. They were, panels were coming in and, and listening to kids and scoring them and getting them feedback. It was working. It was great. It was like, this is what we thought we would do. But one day, I walked out of my office. And I turned the corner to one of the first classrooms near my office. And it looked like this. OK, so it wasn't exactly this. But it felt like this. That these beautiful groups, these tables, these kids working together was, was flipped over to kids in rows. I go to the next class, the same thing. What the heck is going on? I thought we were a PBL school. So I go in. Sure enough, it's the district mandates. The district math benchmark came out. Teachers snap back as if we had never even committed to going to a different direction and just got kids in rows to get them ready for this because they couldn't handle that pressure. So, we had, so we, had to, we had to look deep. We had to go back. We went back to our vision. We looked at it. We said, which way do we want to go? We want to take the easy route? Are we going to do this right? So we, we went back. We looked at the vision. We reestablished our belief in it. We worked together. We did some more training. We did some capacity building. Because, like I said, we just learned how to do this. And we pushed forward. We, we avoided what I think everybody has to go through at some point, which is to fight the snapback. And the way you do it is you stick together. The way you do it is that you, you get yourself caught. You build capacity. You get people connected to the work. You stay connected with one another. So then we're rolling. We've got kids doing hands-on projects. They're, they're got their, their it's real world kind of stuff. They're working in groups. They're presenting. They're doing all this work together. They're loving school. They're engaged. It's the dream, right? Then there's this little, little, little thing in the back of our heads, though, still playing in there. We're like, but is it enough? Are, I mean, we're an elementary school. Are we giving them everything they need? Is every skill there? We're sitting at another crossroad. Are our projects good enough? Is this, is this OK? Even, even more for our families. Do our families know? We're seeing some cool things. We're seeing kids do stuff we've never seen before. Do their families see that? Have their parents seen that? So we had to decide again. And what do we do? We went back. We built, we built from capacity. We, we reestablished ourselves. We looked at what we did. We worked together. We did more training. We even have a driving question for it. And what we decided to do is we did away with a traditional open house. We put ourselves out there and we said, you know what, for this night, one night of the year, we're going to do an exhibition. We're going to, everybody across this, this campus is going to put their work out there. Every kid had to present work on the same night. We invited everybody we could think of. And 1,500 people showed up on our tiny little campus. It was crazy. Kids were presenting, doing plays. There was, uh, they had all kinds of great artifacts. They could talk about their work. People were scoring them. We had first graders leading a, a lemonade stand, doing math kind of concepts. We had sixth graders doing a restaurant project. We had one of our probably most famous projects in terms of people seeing it. 
we had a film crew from BIE show up and record our kindergartners talking about how, how to deal with stray animals in the neighborhood. It's amazing work, just, just putting ourselves out there. We had fought through what I think is kind of a second, a second hump in the road. There's nothing worse than doing this poorly. This has to be done well. And that's done by putting yourself out there. By, by putting your work out there, that's what we're asking the kids to do. We have to do it too. And that exhibition did that for us. It really pushed us past that. So let me fast forward a couple years. In the beginning of the year, it's pretty common to have a project that will kind of get to know you project. Uh, we're learning about, about the PBL elements, maybe setting some foundational skills that we know we're going to need for other projects. So this is a second grade project. And what they wanted to do was make sure kids could ask good questions. You know, sometimes we ask the driving question and crickets. We weren't, they, they didn't know what to ask. So we want to give them those skills. We'd put them in groups, they were having a hard time. So it's like, we're going we're to teach you how to get in groups. We're going to teach you how to ask good questions. We're going to give you kind of the elements of it. So for the rest of the year, we're going to have great projects. Same time, it's the start of the year. We're running fluency assessments and all kinds of letter sound assessments. You know how that goes. And you know what we saw? We saw drops, right? Everybody accepts that, right? There's a summer slide. You test kids at the end of the year, and then by the beginning of the year, they've lost a little bit of it. So we either add more schooling, or we just go, OK, that's what happens. But something happened when we launched this project. When the teacher asked the, the driving question, the kids asked tons of questions, filled up the need to knows. And when she put them in groups, they worked. They had these skills. These are second graders. This is from their first grade experience. Those skills have been taught inside of a project. Those skills were reinforced that way. The literacy wasn't always. Sometimes it's alongside. Sometimes it was drilled over and over and over again in small increments. But for those skills that we had inside of a project, it was like a weekend had passed. They were there. And from there, I realized the most important part. PBL is the answer to equity. I want to close the achievement gap. I need all the skills in a project. I need to have a meaningful learning experience in which we are having them learn that in the project, not alongside of it, not in incremental steps, not testing the heck out of them. From there, this, is, this has been our passion. This has been our drive. We're just project after project after project. Teachers are just building in as much as they possibly can, critical thinking, making them good readers, making them good writers, thinkers, collaborators, problem solvers, all these things. It's, Tires, it's, this is it. This is the great way to, to, to close the gap. We found it. We fought the snapback. We pushed past that mediocre work, put ourselves out there, stayed together, stayed true to our vision. And it really comes down to one word. What we did was we trusted. We had trust. We trusted ourselves, even when we screwed up. There were so many screw ups. So many, which is why we had to trust in one another, because we needed one another. And most importantly, we trusted the process. It works. It, it's not instant. It takes hard work, but it works. And in that, what we've seen is transformative work for our students. So my call to action is, I was sitting right there before. So you need to get yourself up here. Oh. It's your turn. <laughs> it's your turn. Join us for a deep dive. We've got two amazing teachers from our school, Abby Schneider Dunn and Kevin Armstrong, will be in there. And we're going to be talking about one more key turning point that I'll tease you with here. So you can come join us for that. And uh, thank you so much. <laughs>